Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be looking at the concept of Christ consciousness. And in particular we're going to look at how this is something that Jesus himself actually warned would arise as a deception during the final times before his second coming. For those who aren't familiar with this idea, Christ consciousness is a philosophy within new spirituality that teaches that Christ is an inward state of consciousness and a state of divine awareness that can be accessed through each person. According to this model, Christ is who we ultimately are because Christ is a nature that we all have. It's a nature we access when we tap into our most pure and formless state of being. It is the I am presence within every person. So Christ is not someone outside of us. Christ is something that we step into realization of through an inner awakening of our true nature. And our true nature is ultimately union with God, which means that our true nature and potential is ultimately Christ. Christ consciousness is believed to be the state of consciousness of realizing that one is as Christ was, unified with God. So Jesus is someone who actually became Christ by realizing that he already was God at his innermost core. And so since everyone is God at their innermost core, we are all Christ too. We just haven't realized it yet like Jesus did. And before we refute this biblically, let's take a look at some of the quotes from the leading New Age teachers in the whole world on this idea of Christ consciousness. Is he... Jesus, the Christ? Oh yes, along with you. Accepting the Christ is merely a shift in self-perception. Even if he takes another name, even if he takes another face, he is, in essence, the truth of who we are. There is only one begotten Son doesn't mean that someone else was it and we are not. It means that we are all it. There's only one of us here. And these last few quotes have come from someone who has four number one New York Times best-selling books. So this is no small-time underground New Age author here. Let's take a look at a few quotes from Barbara Marks Hubbard speaking in the place of Jesus. You were born to be me. The church is the body of believers who are conscious of being me. Many have been Christed, not just Jesus of Nazareth. You can be Christed too. You are quite literally the word of God made flesh. Neil Donald Walsh's first book, Conversations with God, An Uncommon Dialogue, sold more than 7 million copies by itself and remained on the New York Times bestseller list for 135 consecutive weeks. And The Course in Miracles has sold over 2.5 million copies. These two books have both been promoted by Oprah, so tens of millions of books have been sold teaching people that they are ultimately Christ. This is one of the core teachings of the New Age movement. And we could look at other videos too from people like Daryl Anka, Muji, David Icke. But right now let's look at Matthew 24 where Jesus actually warns against this philosophy specifically. So it reads, As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So Jesus says here in the final days that many will come saying, I am Christ, and that this is actually a deception and a sign of the end times. So to believe that you can be Christ or that you are Christ is to fall under the warning Jesus gave about deception that will take place in the final days. I am Christ is what many shall say to deceive people according to Jesus. And now some people might say, wait a minute, this must be a reference to people claiming to be, you know, the literal incarnation of Jesus, and that Jesus is obviously warning against imposters in this verse. But the problem with this is that there are only about a dozen people who have literally claimed to be Jesus Christ, not all of which had cult followings. Here is a list of all the people who claim to be Jesus, and in what context they claim to be Jesus. And if we scroll through and read each one, we'll notice that there's only about 12. So when Jesus said that many will come in my name and lead many astray, he couldn't have been referring to 12 people and their insignificant cult followings that have all dissolved with time. 12 is not many people, but what is many people is the millions and millions who are involved in the New Age movement who believe that they are literally Christ, because Christ is an inward state of consciousness. Jesus also says later in Matthew, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So in addition to fleeing from the deception of those who say, I am Christ, Jesus is also telling us here not to believe anyone who says, there is Christ. And once again, the New Age fulfills this prophecy by telling us that Jesus is something within you. 
Whether you want to say Christ is something you are, you can become, or something already within you, Jesus himself warns against these ideas in Matthew 24. Christ can't be something already dormant within your heart if Jesus Christ says not to believe anyone who tells you where Christ is. And when it comes down to it, guys, this is the first and oldest lie in the book. Remember Satan told Eve that she can become immortal and become like God if she rebels against God and eats from the tree that would give her secret knowledge? We're seeing this exact same lie manifesting in the New Age, where we are now told we can all become Christ. In Genesis 3, it reads, But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So Satan is the first one to come up with the idea that through some kind of inner wisdom or knowledge, we can become like God. And we are hearing this echoed from the New Age teachers who are telling us we can all become like Christ through ascending to higher consciousness. And we will look more deeply into Genesis and its relation to New Age theology in another video, but for now it's important to realize that Christ consciousness is the same type of idea that first came from the enemy of Jesus in the Bible. And check this out, this is kind of funny. So the Bible says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And the first and most significant work of the devil was to tell Eve she could be like God. This is the lie that led to mankind's separation from God and infected humanity with sin, which Jesus came to destroy. So the entire reason he came was to destroy the works of the one who told us we can all become like God. The lie that we can be God or be like God, according to the Bible, is ultimately what brought sin into the world in the first place, and eventually what led to the death of Jesus on the cross. It's ironic to think that the version of Christ taught by someone like Deepak Chopra, for example, is one that not only Jesus himself warned against, it's one that actually caused the sin that Jesus said he came to die for in the first place. So we have seen how Jesus warned against this idea specifically and told us not to believe anyone who says, here is Christ or I am Christ. And we have seen how this idea of Christ consciousness perfectly parallels Satan's original lie to Eve in the Bible. And I think this should be enough to convince us that Christ consciousness is false. But we're going to take a look at a few more arguments to just really put the nail in the coffin here. Another point against this idea of Christ consciousness is the fact that John the Baptist, whom Jesus said is the greatest among any man who has ever lived, denied being Christ. If Christ is something we can all become, why did the greatest man ever deny being Christ? Jesus says, Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Now let's see what John the Baptist says about himself here. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And then later on they ask him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor a prophet? And John answered, saying, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. So this is someone, guys, who is led by the Spirit of God in the wilderness, living off of bugs and honey. Someone predicted in the Old Testament a thousand years before he was even born. Someone who baptized Jesus Christ himself. And someone who Jesus said was the greatest who ever lived. And he denies being Christ. So if the greatest man ever is not Christ, how are we Christ? If Christ was really just an inner nature we can all manifest in us, or arrive at, surely the greatest man ever would have told us something about him having Christ consciousness or being Christ. But he doesn't. A fourth point to make against this idea of Jesus teaching Christ consciousness is that it's a misuse of the word Christ. The word Christ comes from the Greek word Christos, which means anointed one, the Messiah, the Christ. This is a word which is only used in scripture to describe Jesus. What the New Age movement does is create a new definition of the word Christ and turn Christos from a he to an it. Out of the 538 times Christos is used in the New Testament, it's always used as a he to refer to a person, in particular Jesus. It's never spoken of as something that could describe a state of being or a state of consciousness. A perfect example of this is in 1 Corinthians 15 starting at verse 3 where it says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. So a state of consciousness can't die and then be buried in a tomb and then appear to 500 men. That doesn't make sense if we're going to adopt this new age definition of the word Christ. The verse reads, he was buried, he was raised, not it was buried and it was raised. 
a state of consciousness can't die and then be buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. So by believing this idea of Christ consciousness, we have to adopt a new definition of the word Christos that doesn't make sense in terms of how this word was actually used. And there are other ways to refute this idea too, such as how Christ consciousness is a different type of Jesus than Paul taught, which he warned of specifically in Galatians 1 verses 8 to 13, how this perverts the simplicity of Christ, and Paul says those who do so are false apostles in 2 Corinthians 11, how Christ consciousness is a form of works-based salvation, when Paul says we are saved by grace through faith, not through our own works or our own doing. If you think that you can reach God through raising your own consciousness, you're in works-based salvation. And last but not least, how the Bible says things like, Put fear in them, O Lord. Let the nations know they are but men. Or to the king of Tyre, God says, Because your heart is proud and you have said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of the gods in the heart of the seas. Yet you are but a man and no God. Now this is actually a reference to Lucifer. It's widely accepted that Ezekiel 28 is a reference to the spiritual power behind the king of Tyre. A prideful spirit that wants to exalt itself to God's level. Or in 1 Corinthians, where it reads, and again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast in men. So we have looked at how Jesus warned of those who say, I am Christ, and we have seen how this philosophy echoes the first lie Satan ever told mankind. We have seen how the greatest man ever, according to Jesus, denied being Christ. We have seen how this idea introduces a false definition of the word Christos, which isn't used a single time in scripture. And we have seen additional arguments varying from specific warnings against different Gospels to verses telling us specifically that we are not God. So I really hope we can all see here that this idea does not come from Jesus or anything his disciples taught. In reality, it comes from Eastern mysticism, which has leaked over into the West through theosophy and through the New Age movement, and it also comes from channeled material. From a purely historical point of view, it doesn't reflect anything Jesus actually said. And we know this because we have four biographies that were either written by eyewitnesses or during the lifetimes of eyewitnesses. And we have Paul's epistles to the early churches, which were written by someone who saw Jesus himself and checked his gospel against Jesus' own brother and his disciple Peter. So we know what Jesus taught, and we have primitive source material going right back to the time of Jesus and the disciples. And when we draw our beliefs about Jesus from history itself, not only do we see that Christ consciousness is a topic that is completely absent, from the ministry of Jesus, it's even warned of and contradicted by Jesus himself. And in addition to, you know, the arguments we've went through, we can know that Jesus did not teach this kind of mystical philosophy of Christ consciousness through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. When we believe on Jesus in our hearts, what he does is he gives us his spirit. And his spirit, since it's him, it confirms to us who he really is. And it teaches us all spiritual things. And if I could encourage you guys in one thing, it would be to seek Jesus for who he really is and pursue the Holy Spirit. Because the minute his presence bears itself in you, everything changes. And then you don't have to worry about, you know, who was Jesus because he lives inside you. You know who he is now. And so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.